Hi there, Parker again, and I'm back to talk a little more about the side effects of the powerful meds prescribed to keep me alive. I'll also talk about navigating a romantic life while on the precipice. I don't want this to be a grim slog, you know? So let me start and tell you about the serious stomach distress you can expect when taking Verzenio, and a few things I found that help ameliorate the general awfulness. Dear God, I don't want to talk about nausea and diarrhea, but as it affects me every single day and is among the most common side effect, I feel I must. I've learned a lot since February 2021 when I started this wild ride, but in the beginning, I, everything was terrifying and bizarre and out of control. Every day, all day, I felt wedded to the bathroom. Work became complicated as I had to plot my day around proximity to a public restroom. As I never knew when I'd be slammed by a bout of vomiting or the urgent, uncontrollable need to, again, evacuate my bowels. My ability to concentrate on work began to slip. I also was so fatigued and weak, I could barely walk more than a few blocks without having to rest. But I learned quickly, dehydration caused much of that fatigue and a lot of the concentration issues. So what can you do? While it is still an everyday battle, over time, I found some things to do and some things to avoid. You must always carry water with you. Even if your trip away from the house is short for the sake of your energy levels, brain function, and kidneys, yeah, they really take a beating on these meds. You will need at least 80 ounces of water every day. So here are the things to look out for. Yeah, you need to drink a lot of water. Mild tea is okay, but some things are just out, out, out. Tragically, coffee has to go. So do any carbonated drinks, and alcohol should be avoided as it can dehydrate you really quickly. Your physician will likely prescribe some over-the-counter stuff like Imodium and wonder why you're not getting relief from these products. Well, I will tell you. Yes, taking them will stop you up for a while, but it's not as if the problem has gone away. It is still there, just waiting for you and the dehydration issue remains. Still, it helps to have another weapon in your arsenal, so keep it on hand for when things get rough. Now, enough about tummy troubles. On to romance. So, against all odds and expectation, sap does still rise. Yep, this 65-year-old cancer girl still craves romance and all that comes with it. One would think the estrogen squelching meds, fatigue, and existential dread would have dealt my poor libido a death blow. Not so, not so. Go figure. I almost wish it would. Almost. As an expat Brit friend commented to me, sex is mostly mental. What she meant was that it's mostly crazy, but for the purposes of this blog, I stand by the I stand by the notion desire is largely a mental construct. So here are some of the things I've found that make indulging not only possible, but still thrilling and pain-free. Breast cancer loves estrogen. So to stay alive, you're not allowed to have it. Well, certainly not very much. Hence the aromatase inhibitor drug prescription. The severe reduction of estrogen most often results in joint pain, dry skin, dry hair, dry mouth, and devastatingly thin, dry vaginal tissue. What to do? Well, if you have a lot of money and don't mind the off-putting smell and taste, there are a myriad of products designed to help hydrate and lubricate your tender coos. After much trial and error, Good God, how much sex is this woman getting? Not that much, I promise. I find coconut oil to be the most effective. 
It stays slick a long time, is available at any grocery store for a reasonable price, and will not leave you smelling or tasting like an artificial strawberry. I'm a grown woman. I do not want to smell like a strawberry. The coconut oil smells and tastes like a day at the beach. Now, who wouldn't love that? And yes, I've checked with my doctor. Coconut oil is fine. It took me a minute to figure out the best way to use it every day, but I hit on something that works for me. Once a week, I make seven robin egg sized and shaped coconut oil ovals. Keep them in a plastic covered bowl in the fridge. Each one takes about a tablespoon of coconut oil to make. Chilling them makes them solid and thus easier to insert, and they feel delicious against hot, itchy, dry skin. I use one every night, and oh my gosh, it makes such a difference. When engaged in sexual intimacy, I make sure to use my little ovals and also have at the ready warmed oil so it is liquid and use it liberally. Try it. You'll thank me. I promise. With respect to the dating aspect of romance, I'm afraid I cannot help you over much there. Dating while dying, okay, not today, is complicated and I'm still working that out. But you know what? Time is short, very short for some of us. Treat yourself like the prize you are and don't let anyone make you feel as though you have less to offer. None of us knows how much time we have. So find love, enjoy sex, and drink a lot of water. See you next time.